In this video, we're going to cover key things that you need to know about the ketogenic or keto diet, including what it is, how it works, and the research that's been done exploring whether or not this is an effective form of dieting for weight loss. So first of all, what exactly is the keto diet? Well, the ketogenic or keto diet is a low carbohydrate but fat rich eating plan. Now, unlike other low carb diets like the paleo or the South Beach diet, which are typically high in protein but moderate in fat, the keto diet is distinctive for its exceptionally high fat content, typically 70 to 80%, though with only a moderate intake of protein. So now you know what it is, What's the theory behind how it works? Well, the underlying premise of the keto diet for weight loss is that you deprive your body of its glucose source by drastically reducing your carb intake. Now, traditionally, carbohydrates are the body's primary source of energy, and when you consume fewer carbs, your body looks for alternative sources of energy. When you limit your carbohydrate intake to a very low level, so typically around 20 to 50 grams of net carbs a day, your body begins to run out of glucose, which is the body's preferred energy source. Because of this, it shifts into a metabolic state that is called ketosis. Now in ketosis, your liver starts breaking down fat into molecules that are called ketones. Now these ketones can be used by your body as well as your brain as alternative energy sources when glucose is scarce. That's why the diet is called ketogenic. So now we understand a little bit more about what it is and how it's made up, let's talk about the diet itself. Well, there's not one standard ketogenic diet with a specific ratio of macronutrients, so carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. But in general, the ketogenic diet typically reduces total carb intake to less than 50 grams a day. To put this into context, that's less than the amount found in a medium plain bagel, and it can be as low as 20 grams a day. Generally, popular ketogenic resources suggest an average of 70 to 80% fat from total daily calories, 5 to 10% carbohydrate, and 10 to 20% protein. Now, the protein amount on the ketogenic diet is kept moderate in comparison with other low carb, high protein diets, and that's because eating too much protein can prevent ketosis. That's because the amino acids in protein can be converted to glucose, so a keto diet specifies enough protein to preserve your lean body mass, including muscle, but an amount that will still cause the ketosis to happen. Now, many versions of the keto diet exist, but all essentially ban carb-rich foods. Now, some of these foods might be obvious to you. These are things like starches from both refined and whole grains like breads, cereals, pasta, rice, and cookies, as well as potatoes, corn, and other starchy vegetables and fruit juices. But some sources might not be so obvious. These can be things like beans, legumes, and most fruits. Now, most keto plans allow foods high in sat fats. So these are the fatty cuts of meats, even processed processed meats, lard and butter, as well as sources of unsaturated fat like nuts, seeds, avocados and plant oils as well as oily fish. But depending on your source of information, ketogenic food lists may vary and even conflict, which is why you shouldn't start on this diet until you've spoken to your own health provider and dietitian to weigh up the potential risks and benefits, because some of these food sources can actually be bad for your holistic health, including your heart, especially processed foods that are high in saturated fats. So what's the evidence and research behind the keto diet and does it really work? So the keto diet has been shown to cause beneficial metabolic changes in the short term. Along with weight loss, there have been recorded benefits in individuals who've got insulin resistance, high blood pressure, and elevated cholesterol and triglycerides. There's also growing interest in the use of low carbohydrate diets like the keto diet for type two diabetes. Now, while several theories exist as to why the keto diet promotes weight loss, they've not been consistently shown in the research, but some ideas around why the keto diet might be beneficial is that the nature of the high fat diet can leave you feeling more full, meaning that you've got decreased food cravings, so overall you eat less and you don't snack. Other theories are that it could lead to a decrease in the appetite-stimulating hormones such as insulin and ghrelin when eating restricted amounts of carbohydrate, and others have suggested that ketone bodies, which are the body's main fuel source on the keto diet, have got a direct hunger-reducing role. 
but it is important to note that there are some potential pitfalls of the diet. So firstly, following a very high fat diet may be challenging to maintain. Possible symptoms of extreme carbohydrate restriction may last for days to weeks, and these can include symptoms like hunger, fatigue, low mood, irritability, constipation, headaches, and brain fog. Although these uncomfortable feelings may subside, staying satisfied with the limited variety of foods available and being restricted from otherwise enjoyable foods can be really tough. Some other negative side effects of a long-term ketogenic diet have been suggested, and these include increased risk of potential kidney stones as well as osteoporosis, and increased blood levels of uric acid, which is a risk factor for gout. The other important thing to note is that when the body stores carbohydrates, it also ends up storing water. So people who go onto a keto diet might rapidly lose weight, which is encouraging, but a lot of that weight loss might be from water weight. So this brings me on to a related point, which is if you're not storing sugar, you're not storing water. So you've got to be careful to replace your water so you don't become dehydrated, because this, like I've already mentioned, can lead to kidney stones and other kidney issues. There's also the challenge around possible nutrient deficiencies, and this may arise if a variety of recommended foods on the keto diet are not included. It's important to not solely focus on eating high fat foods but to include a daily variety of the allowed meats, fish, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds to ensure adequate intakes of fiber, B vitamins, and minerals, things like iron, magnesium, and zinc, the nutrients that are typically found in foods like whole grains that are typically restricted from the keto diet. Now, because people who go on a keto diet often then have to exclude whole food groups, so carbohydrates, assistance from a registered dietitian would be really beneficial in creating a keto diet that minimizes nutrient deficiencies. The removal of many grains and fruits with such a large emphasis on fats can also bring about its own set of gastrointestinal side effects. Keto constipation and diarrhea aren't uncommon. If creating the diet plan isn't done properly because you're going to be losing a lot of the fiber-rich vegetables that you normally may eat, you may not be getting in the fiber and again this can lead to constipation. You may also experience weight cycling and negative side effects on your metabolism. Outside of physical health changes, one of the biggest concerns of the keto diet might be in long-term adherence. It's a very difficult diet to stick to and maintain, and compliance is a challenge because it's so restrictive. This can lead to what is known as weight cycling or yo-yo dieting, meaning gaining and losing the same weight over and over. And this can be associated with poorer cardiovascular health, especially in premenopausal women. That's why some people explore other forms of dieting, like intermittent fasting. Again, this is going to be an individual journey, and what works for one person may not necessarily work for another. It's always really important to speak to your own health provider and dietitian before deciding on any diet. So what's the bottom line? Well, available research on the keto diet for weight loss is still limited. Most of the studies so far have had a small number of participants were short term, so they were 12 weeks or less, and they didn't include control groups. Now, with this being said, keto diets have been shown to provide short-term benefits in some people, including weight loss, as well as improvements in total cholesterol, blood sugar, and blood pressure. However, these effects after one year, when compared with the effects of more conventional weight loss diets, are not significantly different. Now, I'm not trying to launch a personal attack on people who use this diet and have found that it works for them. Every individual is different, and what works for one person may not work for another, but it's important to be aware of the general scientific evidence from population-based studies in order that you can make an informed decision before considering this diet if weight loss is your primary goal. Now, eliminating several food groups and the potential for unpleasant symptoms may make compliance difficult. An emphasis on foods high in saturated fat also counters recommendations from the Dietary Guidelines for Americans and the American Heart Association, and it may have adverse effects on blood LDL cholesterol. However, it is possible to modify the diet to emphasize foods low in saturated fat, such as olive oil, avocado, nuts, seeds, and fatty fish. The keto diet may be an option for some people who've had difficulty losing weight with other methods. The exact ratio of fat, carbohydrate, and protein that's going to be needed to achieve health benefits is going to vary amongst individuals due to individuals' genetic makeup and body composition. Therefore, if you're thinking of the keto diet, I'd recommend that you speak with your dietitian and your own doctor first so you can make an informed decision if the diet's right for you.
If you've got any underlying health conditions, it's also going to be important to monitor any biochemical changes after starting the diet and to create a meal plan that is tailored to your existing health conditions and to avoid nutritional deficiencies or other health complications. I hope you found the video useful and informative. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section about whether or not this type of diet has worked for you, or whether or not you found any potential negative side effects. And I'm sure this is going to benefit the general community. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.